How's it going, y'all? Name's Kago with Kev, as you probably know, and it's time for the Your Turn to Die Iceberg. An iceberg conspiracy is more or less a format for people to discuss facts, theories, etc., progressively becoming more and more obscure as you go. And there's a good amount of those when it comes to everyone's favorite death game. No, not that one. Uh, it should be. What the fuck is that? So yeah, we're gonna be going through and taking a look at an assortment of things you may not have known for your turn to die slash Kimigashine. I've compiled a ton of info from things I've discussed in past vids and some pretty obscure stuff overall, so hopefully y'all learn something new. I'm gonna be pretty succinct when it comes to talking about most of this stuff, cause we'd be here for over an hour otherwise, so. If you wanna get the full details on some things, you can check out previous videos I've done. Shoutouts to Newtsip, Mega Comet, Mello, First Name Surname, and Cyberanzi Baka for helping provide assets and theories. Rojo slash The Ashes to Ashes podcast for helping with the writing. And also other Your Turn to Die icebergs on Reddit by Domadink or Domwondink and I Loves Tazuna. People like Kai, Rachel, Gortoons, and Pale Moonlight for emotional support. And of course you, the viewer, for watching, supporting, and most likely smelling good. Lick and subscribe if you haven't also, and with all that said, let's get into it. The Your Turn to Die Icebergerberg. Your Time to Shine Island Existence is an official spin-off game involving each of the main 12 participants of the death game, attempting to survive on a deserted tropical island. The game came to fruition due to the successful release of Chapter 2-2, with Nagidai promising to create a side story after achieving 2,000 retweets on his celebration post on Twitter. It's very different in gameplay from Your Turn to Die, Your Time to Shine being more of a survival game. You forge for materials, fight enemies, and there are fondness events akin to social links or free time events from Persona slash Rampa, where you get to hang out with the cast and learn more about them. Allegedly, each of the main 12 will be playable for this spinoff, but at the time of this video, currently only Kazumi Mishima is a selectable protagonist. Truly, it was Mishima's time to shine. The game has multiple endings that are worth checking out, which may become relevant to the main game as a whole, and you're able to check out and play Your Time to Shine on VG Person, same site as Your Turn to Die. Was it always Your Time to Shine, or was it Your Turn to Shine? Mandel effect? Something, I don't know. Anyway. There's a handful of Yurchin to Die content that exists in manga slash literature form. There's the gag manga where none of the characters die, the limited edition art book, with shirtless pictures of Keiji, a novel that tells the story of Yurchin to Die from the POV of some guy named Joe, the four panel four coma comics, and of course an official manga adaptation of Yurchin to Die. Naki Dai is involved with the manga as a writer, in fact, he himself started as a mangaka, which we'll be bringing up again later. And it's illustrated by Tatsuya Ikigami, who is known for various adult works. The manga retells the story of Your Turn to Die, adding extra details, and new takes on scenes. Alterations include Rio Ranger appearing early, pushing Sara and Joe down the pit, Sara viewing Kugi's death through an adjacent window, Keiji's horrifying face, and more. However, it also takes some liberties plot-wise that not everyone agrees with. English translations and listings to buy slash read online are of course available. Chapter 2-1 has a non-standard game over where Kyuturo attempts to escape the death game on his own, with his 10 kajillion me tokens, but by doing so, kills everybody else in the process. This right here is probably one of the main contributing factors as to why many, 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 many people really don't like him. The four masters besides Rio Ranger and Midori have had hints to the idea that they're actually human, primarily because of the fact that dolls are not supposed to be able to bleed. Miley's head bled when she got hit by Kai's thought-repellent frying pan, Cephalon cut herself in the medical office to show how to treat Gin's wound, and Gashu Sato is the father of Kai Sato. Some people think he's a doll in full, even after he revealed himself to be more than just the receptionist doll. My take is that, yeah, he just pretended to be a simple doll, and yeah, he was just human all along. When he shot himself, the screen goes red implying blood went everywhere, but since we don't see the aftermath, and like, you know, since it's kind of kept somewhat vague, it does provide some room for doubt on Gashu's humanity. In-game flashbacks have shown younger Keiji Shinogi to have had darker hair. Many people have assumed that he died. His hair, slash bleached to blonde sometime between leaving the police force and modern day. Bright hair color is usually associated with delinquency slash looked down upon in Japanese culture, so it's fittingly symbolic for a disgraced man formerly a part of the law. Or maybe Keiji's actually a Saiyan. At the time of this video, there are four combinations of the main 12 characters in the cast that can survive which significantly alters the narrative, this being determining the fates of Reiko, Alice, So, and Kana, four paths the game can split into. Dialogue and scenes all around are different depending on your choices. Sara Chidoen either copes with or represses the memory of that one gaudy guy. Reiko and Kana living especially has more optimism, while So or Alice living provides more plot relevance slash exposition. This ties into one of the established themes of the game, 
That being logic versus emotion. Reiko slash Kana is considered by most fans to be the true, canon, or better route due to its uplifting overall tone. My personal take is that the routes will eventually shift emotionally through the plot due to being so unbalanced, so Reiko and Kana alive may become more depressing, so an Alice living may lead to happier, more impactful revelations. Or ideally, having a balance between the survivors, both one of emotion and one of logic, might be the key to achieving the best ending overall. This is a very popular theory because of its mind-blowing potential. And it's that Gina Bushi, the child everyone comes to know and love, hashtag Gene Protection Squad, is actually a villain, the mastermind, or just all around evil. <laughs> Gonna list off a few of the reasons why people think he may be kinda sus. Him using the secret passage in 2-2 and never explaining his actions or how he knew of it. His collar not being visible at slash never seen. Him being magnetized in chapter 3 could prove his collar's existence, but until it's shown properly, there's room for doubt slash it could be a trick to make you think he has one. His mouth being covered by a mask, which yeah, Gein was real ahead of the curve, huh? His face in full isn't shown in game, but there have been non kadai sketches for it. Possibly being swapped with a doll to survive the lethal doses of poison in 2-1, or while in the Room of Lies during the reunion with Sara. His personal info being kinda basic on his origins, and his overall background not making it clear as to why a grade schooler has a connection with Asunaro. Mewchan's ability to change expressions and supposedly speaking to Gein, possibly controlling his thoughts in some way. Like the Boil kid from Fairly Odd Parents? Mewchan possibly being the location of the missing Mishima head. The plushie being cleaned by Cephalon, assuming Gein is working with her, a shifty way to transfer the head over to her to dispose of. And many, many, many more. Most of us, of course, don't want Gein to be evil or a traitor or anything of the sort. But there's definitely something going on with the kids, since there's more we don't know about him and that doesn't add up involving him than stuff that we do. The majority of Your Turn to Die's music is composed of borrowed royalty-free assets from sites like winglessseraph.net and primarily loops from the Apple Music Making Program GarageBand. I go into the topic more in my video explaining Your Turn to Die's music, which you can check out yourself, and there's also vids from both Midnight Nicks and Ann L that showcase the loops being used. Alice Yabasame originally was female and an antagonist, but the character all around was heavily changed due to that role among the cast already being filled by Shinsukimi. She was shown off in a non live livestream where he showed off beta assets and cut content, and while no longer a legitimate character, she is still present in silhouette form on the game's save screen. Keiji is referred to as a lady killer by Midori and Ginabushi. It's a double entendre, you see, as a lady killer is usually an expression for a charming man that is very attractive. Oh. And then it's revealed and turns out that, oh yeah, he kinda left Megumi to die a little bit. AKA, he killed her by inaction. I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. So yeah, Keiji is a lady killer in a figurative and literal sense. Rio Ranger the Dress Up Doll wears an article of clothing from most of the deceased characters, exceptions being Megumi, Hayasaka, Ranmaru, and Hinaka. There is some debate as to whether the dark fabric tied around his waist is Naomichi's tank top or Ranmaru's jacket, but most seem to think it's the former. Hinako he rejected due to her death-seeking demeanor giving him a bit of a temper tantrum, but for the other characters, it is not explained for the time being. Maybe they're all actually alive, or maybe the part of theirs that he's wearing exists down under. Unpaid. Ending 1, Massacre, or as many refer to it as, the lesbian ending, is achieved and unlocked during the final vote of Chapter 2-2, where you save Nawagokuro, but sacrifice everyone else. This outcome is notable in that this is the only non-standard game over that is classified as an ending, rather than as a game over, thus far. It is possible for both Anzu Kanashi and Shinsuke Hayasaka to die during the obstructor fights if you fail to complete them within the given amount of turns, and of course alternatively save them if you're f***ing awesome like me. Whether they live or die, the game continues on more or less like normal, plus they don't have much to contribute plot-wise if they survive past their potential deaths. So it's basically saying the two of them don't really matter in the long run. Hashtag doll lives matter. LIBRARY BOOKS ATTACKING MAN! Kana's execution where she becomes a human flower is very fitting due to her gentle, caring nature and cuz a Kana, or Silesium Tortuosum, is a type of African flower with healing properties. You are able to exchange me tokens in 2-1 for personal info on four characters. Gein, Kutaro, Reiko, and Nao. Everyone sans Nao Agokuro gives you the chance to talk to the character's AIs, but for now, it's just a bunch of documents with details about her. You are unable to get enough tokens to obtain the info for any of the other characters. Hacking the game or attempting to do so will cause it to crash. A video by US Aviator showcases this. Check it out if you want to see it in action. 
Kyutaro, in both name and overall appearance, may be a reference to Jotaro Kujo from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Jotaro used the alias Kyutaro in one of the episodes. Swapping the initials around of Kyutaro's name gives us BBQ, aka Barbecue, which leads many to believe Kyutaro will die by burning, slash meet a fiery demise in the future. It will not rain on the day of Jotaro Kujo's barbecue. Midori said something like each coffin comes with an incinerator, so Keiji stuck in the coffin has the potential to die by fire. I can see something happening where Kyutaro swaps places with him to 1. Save Keiji, and 2. Fulfill this BBQ prophecy. Sign here if you consent to Kyutaro taking Keiji's place and dying. The main 12 characters all have hallucination sprites present in the in-game files, which is a carryover from Your Time to Shine, which were used in that game after a member of the cast had died. Die. Whether these sprites will be used in Your Turn to Die in the future remains to be seen. Hallucination Joe, we of course know, introduced in Chapter 2. Mishima and Kai also had hallucination sprites during that chapter for the one token trade. Their sprites there are different from the ones from Your Turn to Shine. An unused CG from Chapter 2-1 depicting Shin with a knife, attempting to reclaim Kai's laptop from Rio Ranger, who appears to have confiscated it. I'm pretty sure we all know how this fight would go. Oh, shit. Mishima's eyes are usually obscured by his glasses, but they can be seen in CGs, usually when he's in very stressful, death highly imminent type of situations. There's also a sprite of his that showed his eyes that was allegedly cut because, according to Nankidai, Mishima been looking way too fine. Disney kids show Vampirina had a song during the end of the episode Dancelvania, which sounded eerily similar to Your Turn to Die's title theme. This is due to them both using the same royalty-free garage band loops, which we've mentioned prior. Not them stealing music, not our capitalistic Disney overlords buying out Yurton to Die. It's an all-around, complete coincidence. Other offenders of having songs similar to Yurton to Die include things like The Adventure Zone, Witch's House, and many, many more. One of my new favorites being the Iceland theme from Wild Animal Racing. If you want to know more about Your Turn to Die's music, with a deep dive into some rich vampirina lore, and highly blurred Disney X Your Turn to Die crossover art, check out my vid on the subject. The real Sohiori during Chapter 3, you're given the ability to name almost anything you want if you don't go with the default. The exception being the names of the majority of in-game characters. He provides different reactions for inputting a character's name. Distinct for first name, last name, and full names all eliciting unique responses. The major characters he provides no comment for and whose names can be used are the names of the dummies, the first names of the floor master sans Gashu, Kugi and Megumi, Shinsukimi, and oddly Kazumi Mishima, cause all the other main 12 are included except for him. Very interesting is that he has a unique, almost feared reaction, to the name Meister, the name of the painting that hosted the Russian roulette minigame. Which might mean Meister, or whoever he's meant to represent, has something about him to really fear. Even for someone like Horse Wiener. Botson is an unused floor master created by, scrapped, and now used as a joke by Nan Kidai. He is sweets themed like Miley and Cephalon, and he seems like he's the original beta design for Rio Ranger, but there are no outright confirmations to this being the case. I think he's pretty okay. Botson! Nankirai showcased this beta image during his stream, with Kugi amongst the cast in place of Bucket Girl Kana. Kugi was the original Kana, but was replaced with Bucket Girl and retooled into current Kana's dead sister. Sara fits the Samurai Woman or Samurai Ona archetype, a historic class of female Japanese warriors known for their leadership, determination, ability to influence slash inspire others, etc. Which Sara herself has shown throughout the story. She's adept at Kendo, which is basically Japanese sword training, her school ID is literally Samurai Ona, and the song playing now, which is more or less Sara's theme song, is known as Samurai Woman. Also, one of Reiko's old band song's names was Samurai Ona as well. Gashu was modeled after 1920s artist Salvador Dali, as he was Nankidai's first thought of a good-looking middle-aged man to design a character after. You can definitely see the similarities between the two in terms of appearance, physical features, and stupendous facial hair especially. Mai's gloves seen in her victim video, Burn My Bread, and on Rio Ranger are nowhere to be found on her doll and in her appearance in Chapter 3. Sprites, CGs, pixel art, none of them. She also doesn't have them in her appearance on the second anniversary group art. This may or may not be an intentional detail, the exclusion of her gloves. That or Rio Ranger took the only pair. Perhaps we'll see if this ends up becoming a thing. Prayer is the only original song on Your Turn to Die soundtrack. Instrumental version of it heard during Sara's emotional reunion with the AI of Joe in the Kana Lives route. Two official music videos for the song exist on the composer Yasuhiro's YouTube channel. One sung by the artist Topi, the other by Hatsune Miku.
Not only is Sara's dad not Sara Chidoan's biological father, Mr. Chidoan also seems to be involved with the death game and Asunaro. He's been shown associated with Kai Sato, talking with and sending emails. He appears at the end of Chapter 2-2 during the Kana Lives route, also wearing a collar the same as Gashi before him. This scene doesn't really get referenced after it happens, so whether it actually happened or not, or if it's a flash forward, is up in the air. The way Mr. Jidoan talks, acts, etc. in the scene depicts him as very knowledgeable about the Death Game's events, like as a high-ranking member of the organization, advisor, possibly even the mastermind. There are theories that the painting Meister is based on him, which, with Midori's reaction to the name Meister, anything to go by, and also his deranged expression during the flashback with Kai, Mr. Chidoan might be truly someone to fear. Nanki Dai we mentioned before started as a manga artist. Majime K. Kuzu no Nichijo was his shonen comedy manga series, aka what he worked on slash did before Kimigashine. The characters' uniforms are a little similar to Sano Beno's, and the main character is depicted in some Nanki Dai sketches, also a cameo on the one year anniversary art, and is on his Twitter banner. Chapter 1-2, Joe Tazuna brings up an embarrassing event from the past, in which Sara tried to sit on a traffic cone. There are Nankadai sketches depicting the event, and a scandalous, totally official leaked photo. Kana Kazuchi is shown to have pudding underneath her bucket hat in both one of the four Koma comics, and also in Your Time to Shine, during one of her events with Professor Mishima. I'm gonna be taking this as being 100% canon, of course. Eat your pudding, Professor. Fluffy slash Furball Now is a furry slash abomination version of Now seen in Nankidai sketches that can apparently absorb people or something. Uh, yeah, possibly her final form, you know, yeah, just something, yeah, whatever. Uh, it was also included in the second anniversary art. Kana and the real Sohiori some speculate to be related in some way due to their similar hair colors, possibly Midori being Kana's long lost brother or something since she was adopted into the Kazuchi family. Could definitely be possible, but of course more info necessary. There are ideas that Joe is Mr. Policeman's son due to their similar look and demeanor, and how he was soon going to be a father in Keiji's flashback. The kid in Kana's flashback who attempted to cheer her up has his face obscured, but is also reminiscent of Joe. Kana may have met Joe at this time, or it's possible each of the characters had an encounter with Joe during critical points in their lives. Or even crazier, there have been multiple Joe Tazanas of varying ages that influenced the cast and ultimately brought them all together for a purpose. Are there any other Joe Tazanas I need to know about? At this point, there are four characters we don't know the first trials of. Kai Sato, the Yabasami siblings, and Ginabushi. Kai most likely was a special case due to his connection with Asunaro. Kai's was probably the kitchen because of the key and also the thought-repellent frying pan. Alice said he abandoned his and went into hiding. That said, while it's very likely, it is not confirmed he and Reiko had the same trial. Reiko and Gin have given no info on theirs. Joe Mama PP69 Winky Face is one of the go-to meme names whenever people make fun of Midori, which is from my playthrough of Your Turn to Die, aka that's what I named Midori when I played it. <laughs> I'm dumb. Your Time to Shine delves into Alice's upbringing, in which his mother tried to raise Alice as a girl. Supposedly, there's a Japanese saying for parents to raise a daughter first, then raising a son is easier, which Alice's mom seemed to have tried to follow to the letter. Alice then rejected slash confronted her on this, cause he felt in his heart that he was for sure masculine, which also kind of explains why he has such an overly macho demeanor to make up for, you know, like the way he was brought up and stuff. This can also be taken as a nod for Alice being a transgender character. His color scheme is very much reminiscent of the trans flag. Beta Alice was a woman also, so this could all be in reference to his initial concept. Could be one, the other, or a mix of both. It's all up to interpretation. Trans rights, yo. Sara having the highest win rate for the death game might be why KG and Shin are both so intrigued by her at the start. Shin we know saw the percentages, with his own being the crux of his character, so as the lowest, him approaching her the highest for the initial investigation was probably him trying to figure out why she has such a good chance at survival. Could have been the case for Keiji as well, him having seen the percentages prior to the start, or it's more likely just his detective senses and having a good judge of character. Due to their connections with Asunaro, their reactions to the real Sohiori, a good portion of the cast being adopted slash orphans, and Gashu's cryptic message about doubting your upbringing, it's possible the cast are all Asunaro, that they all grew up together, or that they all share a mutual past in some way. Some people think that the death game we're currently experiencing is just another simulation utilizing AIs as Asunaro has done many times before. It is definitely possible, but the presence of non-candidates like Joe, Kai, etc. definitely makes it seem otherwise. There are unused songs that you're able to listen to in the in-game files. One example is Tikurin or Bamboo Forest, which was probably a minigame song, a discussion song, or to be seen slash used in the future.
Because Kugi and Megumi were with Kane and Keiji, they aren't among the dummies in Chapter 3. Who are all people who died during their first trial and who didn't meet or interact with any of the other participants? Megumi being a candidate does have a doll, which can be seen in the doll hanger. But Kugi being a non-candidate and not intended to be a player probably does not. That said, Joe, as we've seen, has a doll, despite his non-candidate status, so... What's up with that? I would think that making a new doll during the game would be feasible, especially compared to building an AI for a new person, since the doll is just based on physical appearance. So they could take a character of, like, matching body type and start mixing and matching the clothes and more. It's like putting outfits and wigs on mannequins or something. Joe, but he's like Mr. Potato Head? Keiji drinking eggs is from Nankidai's sketches. The one here featuring an egg with a straw led to a poll that determined a follow-up where Sara lays eggs, and also eggs come out of Sara's ears. Nankidai's sketches are weird, man. There's other egg-related sketches, and of course, eating raw eggs is associated with strength and protein. Cause Keiji's a man! Kana has unused or joke assets in the in-game files for the quick draw minigame. Her holding each of the weapons, including a gun. Unused or a joke. Cause it's funny. Kugi is confirmed to be attracted to women in Your Time to Shine. Discussed in one of Kanekizuchi's fondest events to Mishima. There are apparently unused prize exchange portraits of Joe, Kai, and Mishima. They're supposedly in the in-game files, however, I tried looking for them and I couldn't find them in the folders. There are hallucination versions of these used for the Nightmare Token trade, which makes me think I either just missed them or these living portraits are just fan-made, colored on top of the hallucination ones. If anyone knows the name of the file for these unused portraits, if they were only in an older version of the game, or if you can find them yourselves and can send them my way, please do so. An observation by SJL057 on Reddit is that there seems to be some focus put on Kai Sato's left eye. He hides it with his spatula, a phone wallpaper Nankidai made has it a bit darker than his right, his action CG hides it from view, and his hallucination emphasizes it with all the cracks coming from it. Here's a sketch too with it, again, being covered, and during the fondness event with Mishima in Your Time to Shine, which is where the spatula sprite was introduced, he covers his left eye and is apparently able to see better into Mishima's life. Maybe we're just looking into it too much, or perhaps it indeed does have a deeper meaning for Kai or for the plot. So has a key necklace hidden underneath his scarf, seen in the 2-2 CG when he removes his collar, along with some sprites as well. He wasn't lying when he said he was the Key Master. Where he got it from isn't clear. Somewhere in the game, his first trial room, maybe before the game, and like f***ing Hot Topic, yeah sure, why not? But with that said, it might be how he unlocked his collar. And there's a section in the art book for it, so it's quite possible it's gonna be a really important detail. There are currently two Yurchindai fan games that I know of. Death Warrant by Chance, which tells its own story using a different combination of Yurchindai characters, including the Memory Dance Girl, and Redemption Given by Fate, a non-canon sequel that takes place three years after the events of Yurchindai, Midori and Shin both being prominently featured promotionally. Ryo of the Redemption Given by Fate team drew a sprite of me in its style also, which is super cool. Shouts to Ryo and the entire RGBF team. Both projects have been approved by Nankadai himself, and I'll be including links to both games' websites and social medias if you're interested and want to follow up. The memorandum Sara reads, which details a past death game, very similar to the one she's currently in, people think could be the Hades Incident, aka the first known death game. It's possible the events described in the text foreshadows the course of the current death game, they might be actual future events that are being predicted through the text, or the future is actually the past, influencing the present to become the future, which will then be the past in some wibbly-wobbly timey-wimey Doctor Who time loop thing. Or it's canon Yurchindai fanfiction, also Keiji's a horse. One of the oldest images of Yurchin Dai seen on Nankidai's Twitter is assumedly for an early beta version of the game. Check out Beta Sara, them eyes dude. She looks dead inside, more than usual. Sara and Joe are at Sano Beno, but also Mishima's here too, which might mean he was once their teacher, or one of the first characters Nankidai made. Rough translation of the text as well, but it's apparently a long-held debate between two Japanese chocolate snacks. Sara's eyes stare nightmarishly into your soul. The white room all the way back from chapter 1-2 may have been the first trial room for Ranmaru. The silhouette makes me think Ranmaru might have gotten shot point blank while hanging or blown back onto the wall with a ton of force, then sliding down and into the position we see he's in in his victim video. It's possible the room could have belonged to Hinako instead since we saw her dangling, but I think Ranmaru makes more sense. The magnet room we saw in chapter 3 being more fitting for her. It is also possible that Megumi was killed here due to the room and her death involving chains. There's also the idea that Ranmaru may not have died since his video doesn't really showcase his death, ending too early and Sara saying he just passed out. His bringing up the idea that there's a human from Asunaro among them, it could be him himself, being unaware of his humanity through memory tampering. The dolls were shown their human deaths to prove that they're dolls, right? Which, what if there was a human amongst the dolls that is now convinced they aren't real by association? Android? Or maybe he is just pulling some 3000 IQ plays and convincing people that he is indeed just a robot. 
beep boop. There are possible subtle hints that the Hinako we interact with in Chapter 3 is not the same Hinako we saw die in her victim video. Up until Chapter 3, they've made it a point to obscure Hinako's face, both in her video and also in the second anniversary art, her face is hidden from view. The painting room in 3 showcases art of the deaths of a handful of characters up to now, the non-candidates and also Megumi. But also it has what appears to be the death of Hinako, but with a different girl in her attire. During the fight with Midori, she gets in the main cast's way the most of any of the dummies, which is ironic and doesn't really fit with her character shown previously, you know, with her wanting to die and stuff. Her cut-in portrait is also lacking a collar, which is very weird. Kitaro and Gein, Gein of course being super sus, also don't have visible collars. They are two characters who are for sure alive up to the most recent Chapter 3 and may or may not be evil, but it can be explained away as being obscured from view due to the angle in their clothes. So and Kai, we've also seen their collars as well. But Hinako's as clear as day, just not there. And again, very weird. Because basically every other character has been drawn with their collar present. And it's probably more than just your simple Iraq Sorry, Nanki Dai forgot, especially with everything surrounding her in mind. It is possible she is the human from Asunara Ranmaru mentioned, masquerading as the deceased Hinako. To keep the dolls in line, the game running smoothly, and overall maybe more than she appears to be. And alright, that's the video. Thanks for watching the vid. Links to things discussed in the iceberg are in the description. And altogether, I hope you found the deep dive on Yurten Dai interesting. There's a lot more to discuss, honestly, theory slash trivia wise for Yurten Dai, so I might make a part two or something. Yeah. We'll see. Again, special thanks to everyone who helped to support making this vid, and I hope you guys look forward to more in the future. Lick the vid, subscrink, join the Discord if you haven't, and all that good stuff. Click, click, click the subscribe button. This is Kago or Kev, signing out. Stay chill, stay hydrated, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.